Hello everyone, welcome to the one year anniversary of Breakfast at Tracy's. That's right, we have been coming to you over the internet for one full year, March 30th. This is a picture of where we started. This is what it looked like. Well, good morning. I'm glad you could join me today. This is our first of hopefully many of these daily devotionals that I put together for you to encourage you in your faith because, hey, we're in a crisis here. And I think now of all times, we should be going to God, going to God's word and seeing what he has to say. And so I've arranged a number of weeks according to themes just to encourage you in your walk with God today. And now we're at the one year anniversary. So <laughs> we began Breakfast at Tracy's as a way to encourage you in your faith. Just little thoughts daily. I know that people have watched this from all over the world. That is very humbling. What I find more humbling is that some of you, some of you precious people have been loyal watchers. No, these videos have never gone viral and I don't need them to. My loyal breakfast club has made watching Breakfast at Tracy's their daily habit. In fact, when we took a break over Christmas, some expressed how sad they were. Gracious in their understanding, but sad. It is you, my loyal watchers, who keep me doing this. Hearing specifically how the Lord has spoken to you, how you are growing in your faith, is the reason I became a pastor, quite frankly. I love the Lord and I love his beautiful, albeit flawed, church. And I want to thank all of you for letting me serve you this past year. I don't know where breakfast will end up going. We are taking this journey a little bit at a time, but it thrills my heart to know that in this post-Christian country, your trust in Christ is growing and your love for him is expanding. So I wanted to celebrate today by celebrating you. I would also like to acknowledge two very special people, Craig and Andrea Black. Craig, especially in the early days, helped me to get started. I knew nothing of how to start a video channel like this, but he patiently walked me through it. It took many phone calls and he had to remotely take over my computer many times, but he faithfully served and continues to do so. Andrea, well, what can I say? Many of you know that none of anything you see or hear would happen without her. She came to our church at just the right time, hired for something completely different, but God knew that we would need her and she has worked tirelessly to bring you breakfast every morning. Say hello, Andrea. Hello. <laughs> so today I honor them as well for their help in getting us to one full year. Now, before I go, I want to give you some of God's word. Today we are trusting in God's direction. Here's the setting. The nation of Israel was in bad shape. They were worshiping fertility gods and illicit sex was rampant. Lawlessness and disdain for God covered the land. In response, Elijah prayed that it would not rain for three years and it did not. Eventually, Elijah famously took on the prophets of Baal and Ashtoreth and God miraculously answered with fire from heaven. You can read the entire story in 1 Kings 18. Now, Elijah was already tired from a long day, and while the prophets of the false gods were dead, there was still the little issue of famine and drought. As if Elijah had not faced enough crossroads moment, what was he going to say to the king? Would he backpedal and say, well, I'll pray, but there's not a cloud in the sky, so... Nope, I love what he said. This is a moment of incredible faith. I quote, then Elijah said to Ahab at the crossroads with a clear blue sky while food and water rationing was the norm, go get something to eat and drink for I hear a mighty rainstorm coming. <laughs> I hear a mighty rainstorm coming. Now this is not some name it and claim it thing. Elijah was already promised an answer to this prayer, but he trusted God even in that, in front of the king, he stuck his neck out there with the king. The king that he just made really, really angry, by the way, and told him to gear up because the rain is coming. 
there was not a cloud in the sky yet. This was a very specific situation. Rarely, if ever, will we likely get a direct promise like this, but we are promised some things in Scripture. We are promised that Jesus will never leave us or forsake us. We are promised wisdom when we ask for it. We are promised that the Spirit will speak for us when we need Him to. We are promised that He will save us from hell and to His presence if we put our trust in Him. We pray that you will cling to the promises of God in Scripture and speak in terms of faith, not fear. When you hit that crossroad, may you say, I hear a mighty rainstorm coming, even when there is not a cloud in the sky. Let's pray. Lord, you are faithful. May we never forget that your promises are true and you can be counted on. May we choose the way of faith at every crossroad because of your faithfulness. As we enter our second year of breakfast, may you continue to bless each listener and help them to trust your word to guide them, and may they be empowered by your spirit. Amen. God bless you, everyone. Thank you for getting us to our second year of Breakfast at Tracy's. May the Lord be with you. Take care.